So that's it for the uh, molecular UVVIS. The other uh, spectroscopy that uses uh, UVVIS is the atomic absorption spectroscopy. So like what I mentioned very, uh, very early on, uh, in AAS, the analyte is first atomized before uh, detection. And there are two common uh, types of atomizers. So you have the flame atomizer and the electrothermal atom atomizer. So this diagram just show, I mean, this slide just shows you a picture of a flame atomizer. And uh, we have a simplified drawing, drawing of a flame A system. So the flame converts your analyte into free atoms and the free atoms interact with the incoming uh, UVVIS radiation. So the transmitted light is detected just similarly, uh, just like your molecular UVVIS. You have a monochromator and then um, de and then detected later on for signal processing. And then the other type of atomizer is uh, electrothermal atomizer. So an example is a graphite furnace tube. So uh, the sample is introduced to a graphite tube, which is uh, heated via resist resistive heating. And with that mechanism, you can convert the, uh, the sample into free atoms. And this one, you have more sensitivity because your sample is more contained in a graphite tube. So likewise, you have an incident beam. BAM interacts with your sample, and then uh, the light gets uh, filtered and then detected for further signal processing. So for AAS, um, what's involved is the uh, energy transition of, uh, of electrons in atoms or ions. And these bands are um, specific to, to your elements. So take for, for example, your atomic spectra of uh, sodium, um, these are the wavelengths that corresponds to the uh, elect uh, electronic transition. So AES is mostly used for analysis of trace metals in a variety of uh, matrices. And uh, for example, zinc, there, here's just a short, well, it's a long list of uh, matrices um, or yeah, matris matrices where you contain zinc and methods have been developed for, for the determination of uh, zinc. So you could use AAS if you want to measure not only zinc, but you know trace metals in general, if, if it's in wastewater, air, blood, urine, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is actually a bonus topic <laughs> um, because uh, mass spec is used um, also for for uh, for trace metal analysis. Also for um, it's being used in tandem with uh, chromatographic techniques, which we will be talking about later. But in mass spec, so you have uh, three components. You have an ion source, a mass analyzer, and a uh, detector. So what happens is. Um, uh, you can you have an electron beam source or an ionization uh, source that converts your sample into plasma, which is the fourth state of matter, right? Or I'm sorry, not plasma. I'm getting ahead of myself. These are ions. You convert your uh, your sample into into ions, and then these ions get accelerated to a magnetic field, and which is uh, this whole system is called a mass analyzer. So. The ions get accelerated and then subjected to magnetic field that deflects the lightest ions the most. So based on this mechanism, you can separate the, uh, the ions according to their uh, mass. And um, what the detector reads is the uh, mass to charge uh, ratio of these, uh, these ions or fragments. So here's a typical uh, mass spectra where you have the mass to charge ratio on the x-axis and then uh, relative abundance on the uh, y-axis. So one type of ionization method is called inductively cu coupled plasma. And this is what I was mentioning earlier where um, 
uh, the sample gets converted to uh, to into a plasma or charge uh, soup of charged particles. So uh, an ICB ha has uh, typically composed of argon gas, and energy is coupled to use it to, to it using an induction coil to form the plasma. So this is at high super high temperature, like thousands of Celsius. And so when the sample uh, um, interacts with the plasma, it becomes plasma itself. And um, here's just a picture of ICPMS. So, um, like I said, the sample is converted to plasma using your ICP before it gets read uh, by the by the mass spectrometer. So, in general, ICPMS is more uh, sensitive than um, AAS techniques. So ICPMS can be used for the uh, determination of trace metals in drinking water, wine, food, and those bound to proteins, analysis of soil samples for crime investigations, and determination of nutrient levels in agricultural soils. So, um, so if you want to select between ICB uh, and atomic absorption techniques, it really depends on uh, your goals. Uh, generally speaking, if you want to go um, to low, very low levels, you want to use um, uh, the ICP method, specifically ICPMS, because it can read up to PPQ levels. And um, if you want to, uh, if you have many elements, if you want to test um, a solution with many analytes, ICP is also the way to go. However, the, the, the downside of ICP is, guess what, the, the, the cost. <laughs> it's more expensive than your uh, traditional AA. So um, if you don't have ICP, um, you can still use you know, your AA <laughs> spectroscopy. You can um, just use whatever you have. Um, and, and Dr. Dindi, um, there's a number of analytical service laboratories in the Philippines. So um, mm -hmm. even universities, uh, university analytical service lab laboratories, so you such as UP and, and Ateneo, and, and those major universities, typically they do have um, these types of, of capabilities. That's good. That's good to know. So I think it's just very important for you. Yeah, for you to look to, to look things up. You don't have to buy. You don't have to buy one. You just need to know <laughs> where, uh, where to look. And then um, I just have a question. I mean, like these types of guides, you know, um, 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 they're publicly uh, accessible, right? Yes, they because are all. Yeah, because there might there could there might be students and teachers out there who are wondering, you know, like when do we know when to use um, ICPMS? When do we know? Um, when to use, um, you know, your, your traditional AA instrument. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I got this information from uh, Perkin Elmer, which is a uh, uh, manufacturer of uh, ICPMS. Like, so, yeah. You, yeah, you can just uh, uh, type it online. Uh, you can just uh, type ICP versus AA, and you can actually see this, uh, this particular uh, PDF file. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for uh, spectroscopy. So 